on our cruising boats, seeing seven knots sustained is pretty good sailing. Pushing to eights or nines is a brisk sail and a lot of fun. I've seen as much as 10.8 on my old Sparkman and Stevens out on Lake Erie just off Cleveland. And that's all fine and good, but have you ever wondered just how fast humans can actually go on a monohull? What's the technology? Where is it at now? How far have we come? Well, let me give you a quick and dirty rundown on just how fast the fastest monohull actually is. When Jessica Watson sailed around the world by herself, a story told in the Netflix movie True Spirit, she made the trip in about 210 days. All the way around the planet in just over 200 days, which seems pretty quick. But the boat we're talking about today makes that trip pretty regularly in less than 90 days. Picture this, you're alone in the middle of the ocean, waves taller than your house chasing you down, the nearest land hundreds of miles away, and you're strapped into a carbon fiber bullet with a mast taller than a 10-story building. Welcome to the Amoka 60, probably the closest thing we have to a Formula One car for the ocean. You may think of the Fastnet race as kind of a big deal, one of the biggest races in the world, and it is. But at 700 miles, it's the shortest race the Amoka 60 boat would normally do. These boats were made for the big one around the whole planet, 25,000 miles at sea, cruising speed 25 plus, top speed in the 30s, sometimes 40. Traditionally, monohulls plow through the water like expensive bathtubs, but the new generation of Imokas sprout giant carbon fiber foils like some kind of alien sea creature. These lift the boat partially out of the water, reducing drag, and suddenly your bathtub is hydroplaning like a jet ski. The effect is wild. The boat rides on its foils, reducing wetted surface and slashing resistance by up to 70%. On the upwind leg, the foils act like dagger boards, stopping the boat from going sideways downwind, like our keels do for us. But on a reach or downwind, the foils do something else entirely. They generate lift upward on the vertical. Here's something that I didn't think about but makes a lot of sense. Our boats, we have to generate riding moment, the boat's ability to stay upright despite the sails being blown on by the wind. For our cruising boat's riding moment, we use weight and lots of it. Sometimes 40% of our total weight is lead just to stop us from falling down. Not very efficient. What a mocha boat builders have realized is that it's far more efficient to generate riding moment with lift from a foil than it is from weight in ballast. And the foils are totally adjustable. The first gen could go in and out of course, but also had hydraulic pumps to change the angle of attack to generate more or less lift as they go along. And that lift gets the bow out of the water, reducing drag on the hull. That's why these boats can maintain average speeds across oceans that older designs could only dream about. Now let's talk structure. The hulls are pure carbon fiber composites, vacuum bagged, resin infused, and baked like a cake in an autoclave. The result, ridiculously strong and absurdly light. The entire boat might weigh just around eight tons, which for 60 feet of yacht with a skyscraper mast is insanely light. For comparison, a typical 60 foot cruising yacht tried 20 tons or more. Speaking of masts, the Amoka rig is another marvel by itself. We're talking about a rotating wing mast with enormous square top mainsail and headsail designed for maximum power. And the fact that these rigs are now one designed to control costs and safety, you still get a sail plan the size of a small office building, two and a half tennis courts. When you crank up 600 square meters of sail in the Southern Ocean, you're basically strapping yourself to a weather system all on your own. Then there's the ballast system. Since humans don't come with enough counterweight, Emoka 60s use canting keels. The whole keel fin swings side to side inside the hull, adding riding moment when they need it. And water ballast tanks, and in some boats, DSS style foils. And suddenly, your monohull starts acting like a hybrid multi-hull. Stable, powerful, and terrifyingly fast. But with great speed comes great Chaos. Sailing in a Mocha 60 solo is like to trying to fly a fighter jet while cooking dinner in the cockpit. 
every maneuver is brutal. Just changing sails can take an hour and feel like a wrestling match with a parachute in a hurricane. Skippers wear helmets inside because yes, the boat slams so hard it can knock you out in your own bunk. So why build such an insane machine? Because of the Vendee Globe. This race has turned into the ultimate proving ground for sailing technology. Every four years, naval architects, names like Verdier, VPLP, and Farr push the limits a little bit further. And because the rules box designers into the 60-foot platform, the innovation has to go sideways. Foils and hull shapes and autopilots so advanced that they would make Tesla's self-driving look like a remote-controlled toy. Let's not forget, these boats have not only broken speed records, but they've also rewritten what we thought possible for ocean racing. We might be happy doing a 200 nautical mile day. Their daily runs over 600 nautical miles sometimes. That's New York to Bermuda in a single day, single-handed, on a sailboat. And while they are the fastest monohulls in the world, they're also some of the most dangerous. Dismastings, collisions with floating containers, Foil breakages. If it can break, these folks will break it, usually at the worst possible moment, just like us. Yet despite the risks, skippers line up to take these boats around the planet, chasing the dream of circumnavigating faster than anyone else has before. In short, the Amoka 60 is the razor's edge of sailing on a monohull, a cocktail of cutting-edge composite engineering, hydrodynamics, and sheer human courage. It's not built for comfort. It's not even built for safety. It's built for speed. And when it flies on its foils, skimming the ocean at 40 knots, it might just be the closest thing we have to magic on the high seas. And the beauty of the sailing monsters for us mere mortals, all of this go fast and last long technology trickles down through the sailing hierarchy. Most of our boats now have two speed winches, maybe even three speed winches. The Amoka normally uses a six speed. Where do you think we got it from? Dyneema line for everything on a cruising boat? That's a reality now, thanks to these racing boats. Hydraulic backstay? Yep, racing boats. Even the R&D these designers do on foil design trickles down. Catalina's whole new 6 series of boats has a totally redesigned keel system that comes from R&D that started with racing. We now know how to make keels have significantly less drag at low speed, but also significantly more lift when traveling faster, and we owe that to racers. So they make our boats better and better, but they do something else I think deserves recognition. Safety. If it weren't for these guys and girls rocketing around the ocean at 40 knots getting hurt and snapping mass, we wouldn't have the safety standards that we do on our normal boats now. E-perbs and self-inflating survival PFDs, jack lines and low weight harnesses, personal locating beacons on our PFDs. When these folks get hurt, the race officials find ways to stop the accident from happening again, and the safety measures trickle down to us. So we may not rocket around at 40 knots, but we're a lot safer because these folks do. If you like speed, and Emoka 60s are just about the coolest thing since running backstays for you, I bet you'd also love this article. Dyneema burned through by a sheet. In the early 2000s, Dyneema was a breakthrough lifeline material, as strong as steel and much lighter, inexpensive, simple to install, at least it seemed that way. Low stretch, UV resistant and chafe resistant, World Sailing accepted it for racing, and then in 2016, World Sailing changed the rules, restricting Dyneema lifelines to inshore and multi-hull racing. This article is a great read, I'll leave a link in the description for you to check out. If you like sailboat videos, please hit the thumbs up so we know you're out there and leave a comment if you know of a technology us cruisers use every day now that we got from racing. Oh, and hit subscribe so I can see you again next time.